It's like an orchestra of birds up here in the morning. Mm. G'day and welcome to the Weedy Garden where we explore the wonders of growing our own food. And on this video I'm going to show you how I grew my own pancakes. <laughs> the other day I made my own pancakes, believe it or not. I grew them up here in the garden. I used uh, cassava, also known as yuca in Spanish. This is actually about 800 million people on the planet use this as their staple diet. Cassava. Easy to grow. And this one here is called the, the yakon. Also known as the apple of the earth. And just show you what it looks like, for example, when you peel it. it looks like an apple. And the taste. Mmm. It's simply refreshing. A delicious, beautiful fruit, a root fruit, yakon. You can use these in salads, you can juice them. I juice them with carrots and limes and chili and, and ginger and, and star fruit and, and all sorts of things. But on this video, I'm gonna make some syrup out of these. So stay tuned and you can learn how to grow cassava, yakon. And when we're all finished, we're gonna make some delicious pancakes with syrup. And maybe even the teddy bears can have a picnic. <laughs> Welcome to the Woody Garden on another adventurous day on the hill. First, we're going to start with showing you how to grow the cassava, okay? Cassava, they love the sun, so a good sunny location with nice well-drained soil. And you don't want spots that are waterlogged because they don't like to get waterlogged. Cassava is typically propagated using stem cuttings. You can get these cuttings from a nursery or a healthy cassava plant. Each cutting should be about 8 to 12 inches long and it should have at least 3 or 4 of these little nodes on them. So when you grow cassava, it's easy to grow from the cuttings. So when I harvest, I usually take some cuttings like that and I put it in the water. But I'll just take these ones off here so I can pull up this one. Cassava can grow in all types of soil, but it likes to thrive in sandy loam or loamy soil. Just like this, with good fertility and lots of compost. Plant the cassava cuttings down horizontally in the soil, just about two or three inches deep. Cassava is a moderately heavy feeder and they benefit from lots of food and fertilization. So you want to give them plenty of potassium and phosphorus. If you give them too much nitrogen, they get too much leaf. And that reduces their root production, right? And we want to eat the roots. So don't give them too much nitrogen, but give them lots of banana fertilizer, for example. Lots of potassium, lots of ash. So, harvesting. You plant them in the spring. And after about eight to 10 months, the leaves will fall off and they're ready to harvest. And I'm gonna harvest my cassava now because it's time to harvest. Do you remember a few episodes ago I talked about the bush turkeys and how much they were irritating me and coming and digging all my food? Well, I put a, a net, I put a net underneath this time, see? On each side of the cassava, I ran a row of chicken wire. So I just have to pull this back a little bit. I'm just gonna take the first cassava or the first two you can see the cassava root here. This one's a nice one. See that one's going down. See the way they're top feeders? The roots are sort of spreading out like that. Got to do a gentle excavation. Oh, there's a centipede, look. Come on, out you come. Come on, out you go. Oh. And then we to pull it out here, this way. Ooh, yummy, yummy. Here we go. Ha ha ha, check it out. That's what, we're, that's what we're looking for. See, nicely excavated. I feel like a little archeologist here. Look at that earthworm. Nice earthworm, sorry about the disruption, little dude. If I pull it out backwards, 
I might not break it off. There we go. See, that's how you do it. Beautiful. That's another one. Make a bag, eh, big? When you've done that, then you want to cut out this part in the middle. See, this part in the middle is like very stringy. So then you've got left with that. Chop out this stringy part. So I'm just going to show you a few of these nice yakon. Here's a nice one, see? That's what they look like. Look at that, it's another beautiful one in there. Look at that. See how easy they are to dig away in this beautiful soil? I'm just going to pull it out gently. Let's look at that, see? And to store them. If you let these sit in a nice warm place for a couple of weeks, and then after that, just brush the soil off them, don't wash them, it's important. It's important when you store them not to wash them. They like the soil and the bacteria and stuff keeps them like, keeps them alive and doesn't make them rot. So when you store them, just let them sit first, pull them out of the ground, let them sit for 14 days in the warmth, and after two weeks, just take the dirt off them and put them in a cool, dark place, and they can last up to six months. Okay, so we're gonna use some of these to make some yak on syrup. So I'll, I'll leave, I'll take this one as well. See, I want to plant some mushrooms up the top in another bed where I've got some yakon. So I'm going to go and harvest the rest of my yakon up in the garden bed up there. And this is my yakon bed. So it's time to harvest my yakon. Yakon is very easy to grow. I'll show you what they look like. You just got to get one of these bulbs down the bottom and just save a few of those. I'll plant them pretty much now because if they stay in the ground, they'll just reshoot. Okay, here we go. See this one here? This is the one you want to eat. It's like a, it looks like a potato. And all the rest of the ones, they're the ones that are going to regrow. So I'll keep those to regrow. Beautiful little yakons, they're very sweet. Okay, so I got a little box of yakon out of that. And one nice sweet, sweet potato, which I'm going to eat tonight. But I've got tons more yakon shoots. I plant some of those, but not in this bed. I'm going to put my mushrooms here. <laughs> juice into a big pot. And just let it boil. You can start to see it turns to syrup. It's probably about 5% of the liquid left turns to syrup. you can have a look at it. it it thickens up a little bit when it, when it cools down so just make sure you don't burn it right down but I burn it down so it's about the same consistency as honey or maple syrup that's nice to put on cassava pancakes oh, 
Jesse, there we go. All the bananas down all at once. Look at all the bananas there, everybody. Whole big lot of them. Okay, so now the exciting part. <coughs> and the easy part. Now we're gonna make some pancakes. So, you need some of your cassava flour and four eggs and some milk. I like to use oat milk because I like the taste. I hope this encourages you to try some experimental growing and gardening. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Beautiful, delicious pancakes. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later.